Hey everybody, it's Vicki with Dementia with Grace. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing great. Today's video is on sleep. I get lots of questions and in fact just had a consult um, about sleep, about somebody sleeping too much. What is too much? What is enough? I get that question too. But today we're going to focus on too much. Is my person with dementia sleeping too much? Why does my person with dementia sleep so much? Um, is it okay to sleep that much? Those kinds of questions. I get those fairly often in my practice and um, I wanted to address it today in this video. Um, the reason that people with dementia sleep so much in the, uh, in the latter stages is because of the disease process itself. Remember that um, dementia is not just memory loss. It's, it's all kind of systemic changes in a person. Essentially, really, the body is shutting down at the end stages of dementia. There's a, a loss of thirst, loss of appetite, loss of tone in their body. They're no longer able to walk. They're no longer able sometimes to even sit up. That's why you see a lot of folks, um, and you may know this in your own experience, um, a lot of people need to be reclined. Uh, they can no longer hold, hold their posture. They can't hold their head up. You will see a lot of, um, you, know, of, of, you know, like this or either totally back like this. That's why in the facilities, we use jerry chairs, recliners, um, the bed with the um, head of bed elevated um, so that they have that support um, in their torso, in their head region because they just simply can no longer, they don't have the tone, the muscle tone to hold a posture. Um, so similarly, um, you know, as the body is closing down, um, shutting down, you will see a lot of sleep. Um, I want to remind you that things, um, you know, I, I've said this in lots of other videos and I will absolutely reiterate it now because it is a, it is, I think, I think a useful way of thinking about things. Think of a newborn baby and think of life on a continuum where newborn babies sleep most of the time. They're only awake to eat uh, and to be changed, <laughs> um, you know, uh, and then as they grow older, they start waking up more and they need their tummy time as they become toddlers. They're toddling around, they're doing more. So if you think about life on a continuum like that and a person with dementia is here, you know, they, they start to decline um, through the stages. And at the very end stage, they are sleeping more, just like a baby in reverse. Um, they are sleeping more, they can't hold their head up, can't hold their head up. Um, they are only awake to eat and um, to be changed. Um, and so if you think about that, think about, um, you know, we don't, we don't think anything about a baby not being able to hold their head up and needing support, needing their neck supported, needing their torso supported, um, needing to be fed, needing to be changed. That is exactly what is supposed to happen in the life of a baby. If we think about that then at the end of life for a person with dementia, uh, I think that we can, we can extend grace um, to a person uh, in their final stages because we are seeing that not as, not expecting them to be where they were when they were 50, um, but, but, um, but understanding the disease process and the systemic um, uh, um, effects of the dementia shutting their body down. Um, and so sleep is absolutely probably, you know, 20 hours out of the 24 or even more, they're asleep and that is okay. You don't need to try to rouse them. You don't need to try to keep them awake. Um, their body needs that sleep or their body would not be putting them in that, in that position of getting more and more sleep. So I think if you think about it in reverse, that it, it makes a lot of sense and it just is, it's almost like, oh yeah, that's common sense, that, that's right. So as a person declines and their speech declines, their walking declines, all of that declines, um, you're gonna see more sleep. So that is, that is six, um, seven. By the time they're in a solid seven, they're sleeping most of the time. So that is about sleep. There is another video and I will try to find it and link it below about, you know, my person won't sleep at all. 
um, and that that happens too and so we will discuss that but in a different video so that we can keep these short okay all right I am looking so forward to more videos with y'all if you need a group of people if you don't have a support group anywhere around you or you can't get out and go to a support group we invite you over to Facebook to our support group it's Dementia with Grace caregiver support group and it's a group of absolute geniuses um, that help each other you know I'm in that group every day I'm answering questions and I'm you know lending my my clinical experience um, to everybody but there's a lot of hands-on um, I have I'm taking care of my person or I have taken care of my person um, and this is what I experience there's a lot of you know in the trenches common sense advice on that group and it's day in and day out if you put a group if you put a post on there at midnight you're probably gonna get a couple of responses I mean people are just on it all the time um, and they they enjoy helping and want to help because they know how helpful it is to them when they need a question answered so come on over there to Facebook there's a link down below um, the book dementia with grace a caregiver's guide um, is um, on Amazon that's not the name of it by the way it's dementia with grace a new positive way of dealing with behaviors in people with dementia. The thrust of the book is about about behavior management, about stage four and stage five is usually when the behaviors um, emerge. Um, but uh, these videos uh, address all across the gamut, all across the stages. Um, so anyway, there's some help for you out there if you need it, okay? All right. I love y'all. I, I hope you take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you again soon. Talk to you later. Bye. Mwah.